Hi, today I'd like to share with you a real client story of how a CEO client was able to deepen her awareness and accelerate her action to become a more effective leader in an experiential coaching session with me using a mind-body approach. I asked the CEO what experiential coaching venues she would like to choose. I gave her some suggestions or options of other clients have chosen. I said, is it really anything that you are interested in that's intriguing to you, that's something you enjoy or inspires you? And so she chose pottery making and painting. She's not done that before, but she is intrigued and wants to try it. So we made an appointment for a private lesson at a pottery making workshop. Before we walked in to the workshop space, we stood outside for about five minutes to set our learning agenda. I asked her a question that, what is something you're curious about? What is a question that you would like to have more clarity on? That's typically really connected with your, uh, learn, your typical leadership challenge, something you're working on. So she said, uh, she wants to work on two things. She wants to learn how to, how to establish more cadence with her executive team and how to promote more collaboration within her executive team. So on the cadence side is that she would like to be able to establish a cadence for reviewing the results and reviewing the metrics and achieving results on a more consistent basis instead of just all having great ideas and not following through for the, with the team. The second uh, question is about collaboration. She would like the team underneath her to be able to work together well without having her to make every decision. So again, her learning agenda, we simplify to a short sentence, is how do I establish more cadence and team collaboration? Then I said, well, now, I'll write this down on my piece of paper. You can drop this, leave this at the door. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Just have fun with the experience of pottery making. And I will hold the agenda for you. At the end of the experience, as we start to debrief, I will remind you of the learning agenda and we'll start to debrief and draw connections between the learning in pottery and the leadership challenge you face. So off we go. We went into the workshop. So there's a teacher with the two of us. We each had a wheel, a spinning wheel. So we had each had a ball of clay, right? Um, and then we put the clay into the center of the spinning wheel. And then we start to spin, right, with a foot pedal and, and the machine would actually spin at a consistent pace. And then we start to shape and form. And we both decided to make a bowl, different shapes though, uh, we decided to make a bowl and we can really form that using our hands with the spinning um, uh, of the machine. And the second part of that is after we have formed our bowls and our teacher was able to use a torch to accelerate the drying and then we can start to paint this uh, bowl right away uh, within 10 minutes. So the second part is to paint the bowls and we both chose our colors. So my client chose a beautiful uh, two base colors, uh, this yellowish orange, a lighter color uh, all over. And then she chose this kind of real bright sky blue uh, over the top half using dripping, almost Jackson Pollock style to drip it down. And then she also put a blue glaze over the dripping so that you would come, come out and turn out to be uh, more of a glaze look and it's a bit more shiny and it's pretty. So. At the end of the the uh, at the end of the pottery making and painting session, we had a ball. We had a great time. We um, went to the other side. We actually went outside to do our debrief, reflection, and discussion. This is where I facilitate that and ask questions to help the client uh, draw connections between the learning in the experience in the experiential uh, workshop in the pottery workshop and their own leadership challenge. So I asked her, what did you learn about helping to build cadence with your team? And she said, you know, when I was forming the, the bowl on the pottery spinning wheel, it required a consistency of the spinning machine. And I had my hand holding down the side and the side walls, the outside walls of the bowl. And it required a firmness 
a firmness to hold it so that I, my hand is not being pushed around by the wheel and I am forming the clay, not the clay pushing me. So also she said that firmness I apply to the clay it was a steady firmness. It was not in and out, in and out, weak and strong, because otherwise I, my hand will be pushed all over the place. I can't form the clay. So there's the steadiness. And that's what I'm learning about cadence. If I can apply that steady firmness in my leadership style, so my team will not only come up with great ideas, and we will actually follow through. We'll measure our KPIs, key uh, performance indicators, and we'll also make sure we are uh, achieving our results on a consistent basis. You said, I can really feel that firmness in my hand that it required of me to form this beautiful clay. And I said, wow, that is beautiful. Thank you for sharing your insight. And then I moved on to the second part of her learning agenda. I said, what did you learn about helping the team collaborate better. She took a little bit more time to think about this. Of course, I'm simplifying our debrief process here and then there's a lot of dialogue back and forth and for me to help her and uh, draw that connection. And she thought about, uh, about it this a little bit more, how to help the team collaborate better through the learning of pottery making and painting. And she said to me after a few minutes, she said, you know, I think I got it. As I am painting the pottery, the bowl, I'm at the potter. I'm not part of the clay. There's color, this yellowish orange, there's this blue, and then this glaze over the blue, the blue glaze over the regular blue. And we would paint them three layers, the base layers, and dry each time after each layer. Then we add the glaze and then we'll dry that again. She says, the whole time, if in the pottery, the spinning part of it, making the form of the, the clay and the painting, I am the potter and the painter, I'm the potter. I'm not part of the clay. I have a tendency to become part of the clay and part of the team in a way that's almost too much. I am solving their problems and making decisions for them versus empowering for them to work together to make decisions. She, she took a sigh, she took a deep breath and kind of sat back a little bit. I'm the potter. I'm not the clay, I'm not part of the clay. And I was taking notes feverishly because I always want to make sure I capture her insight so I can share it back with her later on. And um, I said, all right, that's, that's really inspiring for me to learn about your learning about how to build cadence with the team through the steady firmness and how to establish more team collaboration by becoming the potter versus being part of the clay. And I said, would it be helpful if we use a mind and body approach now to help you develop a small embodiment practice to accelerate your action to uh, to becoming a better leader in driving cadence and collaboration. So the pottery session deepened her awareness, right? The actual immersive experience in making pottery and painting really allowed her to experience her learning in a full bodied fashion. So the, the whole person is involved is no longer just mind level thinking, head level thinking. So now that we have deepened self-awareness in a present moment experiential way, how do I help her really accelerate the action so it's no not just a great experience and great insight with no action behind it and how can we make that a small and simple enough action that she can actually do it starting the next day so she said yes i'd love to uh, talk about how do we develop uh, an embodied action to help uh, me move towards that direction so using the mind body approach so i said um what is a new narrative at the mind level to help you remind yourself to go into the direction of the leadership style that you would like to embody? So the narrative that's really going to support you to become better leader in building cadence and team collaboration. And we went back and forth a little bit and then we try to make it more of a present tense, positive sentence and that's short enough, easy to remember. And this is the final sentence she came up with, which is not a surprise. I am 
the potter. I'm simply the potter. So that's her new narrative that she would like to live into. Then we wanted to develop a small embodiment action. So a body level physical action to help her remind herself uh, to, uh, to lead in the new way. And I said, may we stand up? So we were sitting on the bench outside of the workshop. So beautiful flowers next to us. We stood up by the bench. And I said, as you speak the narrative, I'm a potter, I'm simply the potter. I would love to invite you to bring up the emotions in your body that, that becoming a potter, this is being part of the clay, would make you feel. She said, I feel much more of a release, a relief, and I feel more freedom and I feel light. I said, invite that lightness and that relief into your body so that emotional experience is part of this, uh, this exercise. Then I said, now say the narrative, say the sentence, with your full body as if you really mean it. And so your body will naturally inform you what's natural to the body as you uh, step into the new narrative and the desired emotion. So she tried a few times until she felt comfortable with my encouragement. And finally, this is what she came up with. She said, this is more of a peaceful meaning for her, a peaceful gesture that will automatically remind her of what she wants to step into. This is what she did. I am the potter, I'm simply the potter. She tried again. I am the potter, I'm simply the potter. So she takes a deep breath and she speaks her narrative. She brings up the emotions that comes with the new leadership style, the lightness and the relief and the freedom. And then she does this gesture that means to her um, to become a potter and brings her the peace. And I said, that's brilliant. Uh, now let's talk about how we can uh, practice, use this physical practice and build that into a habit. And so we, she came up with a few times of the, in the day. I always invite the client to think about three to five times a day. I think it's in the morning uh, before her meditation uh, and the morning before she has her shower. And then she would also practice the afternoon right before she leaves office to go home to work, uh, go from work to home. And the last one, the fourth time is before her evening drink. So we're following uh, the three steps of building a habit, right? The, the habit the habit loop. One is a trigger, one is the response, and one is the reward. So the trigger is well, before my meditation, the, the, the response is actually practicing this. And the, the reward is the actual meditation, right? The shower and uh, going home from work and the evening drink with my husband. So these are a really nice, easy, simple way to build a new habit, um, practicing three to five times a day. And so she said, I believe I can do this. I am confident I can do this three to five times, in this case, four times a day. And we'll see how that goes in the next few weeks. And the key here is to practice this when we don't yet need it. So we built a new neural pathway, a new muscle for us to really become the new potter, the potter and not part of the clay. So this is a neuroscience also is associative learning. So the cells that fire together, wire together as we perform this physical practice of this I'm the potter, and you bring up the emotion that you desire in the new narrative, these cells, cells are firing together and wiring together. It becomes automatically associated or connected. So over time, we actually shift into that, uh, the new presence, the new state of being, but also when, when there is a real need for her to remind herself to be a potter in the workplace, all she needs to do is this physical act and it will bring up the emotions and the narrative automatically because they have been fired and wired together. And she can even do that in a subtle way underneath the table as she's in the meeting whenever she needs it. So that's the idea behind the embodied practice that's mind-body practice to connect the mind and body to accelerate the action, a small, tiny baby action that move towards where we want to step into. I hope you enjoyed this real client case study and have fun with your own practices and let me know if you have any questions.